<laughs> you love that music. There we go. Oh, hello, Jason. How are you? Hey, hello. Uh, doing well. That was that was that was a great way to to intro. Uh, put a smile on my face for sure. Awesome. It's a great segue. Uh, you know, in the middle of the afternoon for you in Los Angeles, it, for me <laughs> towards the end of the day in Chicago, it puts a smile on your face. You were going with the beat. That's what matters. So I have the pleasure of knowing you for the past few years, Jason. Why don't you tell our audience, who are you? Who am I speaking to? Yeah, see, Jason Fairchild, you got that right. Uh, And um, I guess a lot of things. Um, Co-founder and CEO currently of uh, TV Scientific. We're a performance platform for for TV advertising. And I've been in technology, um, staying with the technology theme uh, track, uh, career track since, um, I'd say, the the early nineties, I uh, was, you know, worked for an ISP, one of the first internet service providers, Earthlink, and then moved to my own startup for a while and crash and burn. And then went to go to.com, which was a, the early paid search pioneer became overture and was acquired by Yahoo. And, and then that was, you know, many years ago. And here we are uh, at TV scientific. Amazing. Amazing. And that's how we met. We met through, uh, through you starting TV scientific Personally, I've gotten to know a number of people on your team, and it's a great product. So, giving you guys some extra some extra gas behind that. Uh, what defines you? What defines you as a founder, as a CEO, as a father, as a husband? Yeah, I don't know that I've ever really been asked that before. I think as as a as a founder, I, I would characterize myself as almost a serial entrepreneur. I've done it uh, many times, and I just love to create. And there's you know, there's a there's a lot that goes into creating. It takes a lot of energy, and then there's the next phase, which is sort of you know scale and optimize. Totally different skill sets, and I'm definitely more on the on the create. But as you as you get through these career stages, you learn you have to really get good at both, and, and or surround yourself with people who are, uh, complement your skill set. So I've you know through many years of banging my head against the wall, I've kind of learned those lessons and. And um, try to apply them every day. But uh, so that's who I am on the on the professional side, and then just more broadly, you know, I, uh, I I'm a father, I'm a husband, um, I'm friends. I have lots of friends, and you know, I just I, I love interacting with people. Love you know whether it's creating in this context of business or creating in the context of going out and having fun on the tennis court or whatever it is. You know, just have a passion for for engaging in life. Engaging in life is a good way to explain it. And also just uh, <laughs> using your creative mind to create businesses. So that's wonderful. I'm glad that glad that I didn't throw too easy of a softball at you for that question. Why yeah. you tell us- I may refer back to my answers in the future and uh, use them again, <laughs> having never said those things before. Well, the beauty of this, Jason, is that we're recording it and that it's you're going to be able to keep this <laughs> in the archives, give it to your kids, your grandkids down the line. It's, it's wonderful. How would you characterize your skill set that you're going to be sharing with the Oh Hello community? You know, I I think it's about connecting dots with various uh, technologies or capabilities and seeing what can be. Um, and you can call that business development. You can call it innovation. You can call it probably a bunch of different things. But that is uh, what gets me out of out of bed every morning. And when you know when I'm talking to a potential partner, for example. I I deep I try to deeply understand what exactly they do and what what their core capabilities are and then try to map them to to ours to see what new thing can be created or how that technology can make us better or vice versa. That process is is sort of really deeply embedded in in in, in my psyche and what I like what I like to do a bunch. So I don't know if it's a, a defined skill set per se, but it's hard to quantify it and there's no school for it, no, but not. that's, but I really enjoy it. But how did, how do you, how did you develop that process? So if you just being a founder of, of multiple companies throughout your career, being in tech for 30 plus years, what gave you that, what, what helped you refine those skills to be able to sharpen that spear, so to speak? It's a good question. I think I grew up, you know, ADD, like a lot of, like a lot of folks, and I've always viewed it as a weakness that you have to, you know, build controls around and, and, and crutches around. Um, I think what changed for me was that when I first got into the internet business and at, at Earthlink, 
and it was an, an incredible time where there's just an explosion of of innovation of new companies doing different things and even within the company we had had to wear many many hats and i i realized then that what i thought was a weakness actually was a strength is i can i can i can track a bunch of different things at once. Um, that's the curse and the gift of ADD. And then that's when I started realizing that, um, you know, then I could start to see the interplay between uh, seemingly disparate, whether it's companies or capabilities or whatever it was. And then I started to really excel in that environment. And, uh, and that has, that was sort of the seed of, of, you know, a, a more disciplined approach today. Back then it was just chaos, slightly controlled chaos, but led in a, few really interesting, innovative directions. And, you know, now it's more refined than, you know, 20 years later, of course, it's going to be a bit more mature and refined. Well, thank you for sharing, for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, a lot of people within our ecosystem, within advertising, within ad tech, within MarTech have ADD as well. And a lot of people just don't, don't admit to it or weren't properly diagnosed at different stages or steps of, of their childhood or their adolescence or their careers. And when you look back, I think that could have been part of the reason and rationale as to how you became a, a founder and a CEO, because you're able to have your multiple fingers on multiple pulses, so to speak. And so that's definitely a gift, not a not a curse. Yeah, I, I've come to view it as such. Um, and um, and yeah, you can because you can focus on multiple things at once. Um, some would argue that if that's really possible, but I think it is. Um, you can then yeah. start to associate between them. And that free association actually builds muscles of, of, you know, connecting the dots or, or, you know, seeing how one thing can complement, complement another or become another, those, those muscles start to build. And those are, it really is a positive thing, I think. So looking back then, what would you tell your 25, 35 year old self? You know, I've been asked that question before and I, I think I'd just shut up because anything I'd want to tell myself would be to try to comfort the, you know, anxiety that we all, many of us have early in our careers or early in our lives, especially when I've had some lack of stability early on. And, you know, and for me, the, the that made created more anxiety. And I would have a, an urge to, to go back and tell myself to relax. But honestly, I think that anxiety, you know, it fuels a sense of urgency and, and, you know, fear is a great motivator and anxiety is a form of fear. And I, so I don't know that I'd want to change that, uh, honestly. I love that. <laughs> I, I absolutely love the fact that you said, just shut up. It, it, <laughs> I have done, I've recorded, uh, we have done, at this point, we've recorded roughly 70 different pods and no one has given that kind of answer. And I really respect that because that's something that looking back, like I would also tell myself is just, just shut up. Just, just let it be. Just for that exact reason, I really respect that that way that you that you look at it. With that said, what excites you about mentorship? What excites you about the Oh Hello platform? So, in my, in my late fifties, and this the CEO job is hard. Founding companies is hard, and people have this association, this sort of almost glamour like association with being a tech entrepreneur. It's such a cliche term. And it's just effing hard. Uh, so, and, and honestly, most people who do it are not qualified to do it. Uh, and I, I had the benefit, and I'm not saying I'm qualified. Uh, I just happen to be doing it. I had the benefit of co-founding OpenX uh, and being a chief revenue officer under a CEO and a president um, who are, you know, had way more education than I did, way more better experience than I did. And I, I frankly got to be a, I got mentorship for 12 years and an active apprenticeship um, where, you know, I, I co-built a company, but I wasn't a CEO and I got to see, you know, I got to see how it was done right. And in a few occasions where mistakes were made and that's just an incredible learning experience. And I wouldn't be where I am today, uh, such as it is, um, without having, you know, that level of mentorship. And even before, you know, when we started, um, when we started go to dot com, I was in the, I wasn't, I wasn't a founder, but I was in the early like twenty. 25 employees, something like that. And um, that was a, that was built out of idea lab and idea lab was one of the first tech incubators. So I saw firsthand, I sat in the building and watched, you know, Bill Gross who runs idea lab start 
I don't know, I probably saw him start a hot 50 to a hundred companies, including go to.com, um, e toys. There's a bunch of them. And, you know, never thought that was even possible before. And then I got to, I got to know Bill and Bill is a co-founder and investor in TV scientific. Um, and just knowing being, having access to people who've been there, done that. And, and, and it shows you that, Hey, it's, it's possible. And it also has a forcing mechanism of sort of raising your own expectations about yourself um, which I think are all super positive and you got to pay that forward. So uh, whether it's just being a sounding board or um, walking through not the glamor, but really the crises is that you have to live through to be an entrepreneur and how you deal with it. And, and, um, and it's reasonable and rational to have crises and have a lot of anxiety. And I think having someone there to tell you that is probably really important. And I, you know, I can, I can offer some value there. Amazing. Well, we're excited to have you on the platform. It, who are some of the, you had mentioned Bill, any other specific names that you want to mention that have, of people that have had a profound impact on your career? Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, I think we all have our networks that uh, when I go through an experience, whether it's starting company or whatever that I, I reach out for perspective on, you sort of, there's career folks and you know, the big ones there are John Gentry uh, from OpenX, and we also worked together in GoTo.com back in the day. Tim Cadogan, the CEO, former CEO of, of OpenX, he's at GoFundMe now. Um, and these are the guys I've worked with in the trenches for you know for for decades um, and learned a bunch from. Um, Bill Gross, who's the founder of Idea Lab, um, he's less a bat phone. You know, I have I have a problem. Let me call somebody. Kind of mentor, more of a more of someone I admire and and show is basically demonstrates what's possible and uh he's been a he's been a great contributor to my career in that regard and then i've got like personal mentors where if you're going through a crisis you've got like sort of the business aspect and then then you've also got whether it's you know just anxiety management or you know just perspective you know i've got a few of those as well and i i like many of us probably triangulate across across you know your support network but those, you know, those are, those are two by name or three by name. And then a couple more on the personal front. Amazing. Thank you for mentioning them. And I'm sure that they'll appreciate hearing that as well when they listen to the pod. What, uh, as you know, philanthropy and just giving back and altruism is so important within the Ohio community. What is a cause that's, and we have 50 plus charities that are integrated into our platform, but what's a cause or a causes that are near and dear to your heart and your family? So we have done a lot of work for a charity that supports Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. So, and that's been, a, I don't know, it's been 12, 15 years we've been a part of that organization. So um, the, the, the fundraising events, for example, our entire family has participated in and does participate in. So it's been near and dear to our hearts. We dedicate you know, time and energy uh, to that. Um, and and our, our own son had, you know, independent of that had been to children's hospital and had a you know big impact on on us to it wasn't a life threatening situation but it was you know when someone gets hurt you 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 remember it and they did a you know incredible job uh, for him so so yeah that's 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 the one that that sticks out to me amazing jason well i'm happy everyone's healthy any other parting words of wisdom in a sentence or less that's going through your head that you can just expel to the oh hello community i would say i would say whatever you're whatever you want to do um there's people that have gone through something similar and uh and probably have you know stubbed their toe toes have gone through christ i have experienced the highs and lows of of whatever it is you're want to do um and uh there's tremendous value in talking to those people because you feel like you're not in it alone and that this is all doable because people have done it before. And you can also maybe if you're lucky, save a bunch of time by not going down tributaries that, you know, are dead ends and because you, you talk to folks that have experienced that dead end. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Jason. Thank you everybody for watching, for listening. We appreciate you. Jason, so excited to have you on the platform. Thanks everybody. Until next time. 